Happy birthday. Okay, so this is the portion of the HSA. Bill has two daughters. In volume five. What's that? Bill has two daughters. So which daughter? Talia. Nice. Happy birthday. Yeah. And tonight, today's are Gregorian, but tonight starts her Hebrew birth. Like it's like really cool. This nice time. month of miracles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's invite in the Rav and Karen, and Michael, Monica, Rav Shlag, Rav Brandwan, the Ria Kodesh, the Ramchal, Rabbi Tafum, Rav Avram Azulai, Rav Nachum Mendel of Tepsk, Rav Kolon Shapir and Piasetsta, the Baal Shem Tov, Rav Shem Bar Yochai, one soul with Yosef at Tzadik and Shem. Also, today is the anniversary of elevation for. Uh, Rav Aaron, who's son of Rav Mordechai of Chernobyl, so Rav Aaron ben Rav Mordechai, and um, here we are, this is our One World Weekly Connection, where we're connecting to the Zohar and spreading the energy all over the world, from wherever we are, connecting to Zohar, connecting to the level of Bina, the reservoir of fulfillment for the whole world, and all of reality and the source of everything that we experience of a good nature, a fulfilling nature. And uh, let's also have in mind healing energy for everyone we know who needs healing and uh, the energy of Avavat, of, of Avat Chinam, unconditional love and ending the chaos and conflict that we see in our world. Okay. Um, Phyllis, you want to read English for us today? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks. So there's a, uh, let's, let's, uh, <clears throat> Let's dive in. Paragraph one. By Yitzchak Yaakov mi Be'er Sheva, by Yilech Harana, Rabbi Chia Patach v'Yamar, the Zerach Hashemesh Uva Hashemesh El Makomo Shoev Zoreach Husham Hai Kara Okamuha Okmuha Avav Zerach Hashemesh Da Yaakov Kad Hava Be'er Sheva Uva Hashemesh Kad Azel Lacharan Dichti V'Yelen Sham Kiva Hashemesh do you want me to read the relevance or just go right to the reading? Sure, read the relevance. Okay. The patriarch Jacob is the living embodiment of the central column force known as, in lay terms as restriction or resistance. Okay, so just so we have context <laughs> here, this is this story of Ayetze, it literally, literally means, and Jacob left Beersheba. He he left the town was called Beersheba. You know, you know, I left Holland Park. I went, you know, took a ride to Skokie. I mean, you know, what do we need to know that for? It's not about Jacob's travel log. It's about what Jacob did, the energy that he manifests during his lifetime, the channel that he opened up. And that's the channel of central column. And so what we are connecting to is central column. What's that? Well, that's the balance of mercy and judgment. Mercy's right column, Abraham. Judgment is left column, Isaac. And Jacob is central column, restriction. And what we understand is when those three columns are present, we are opening channels of light to the upper realm. And so this is a great opportunity for us to manifest fulfillment of any nature, fulfillment of a healing nature, fulfilling of a soul, fulfillment of a soulmate nature, of a of a uh, removal of negativity nature. This is an amazing opportunity. That is what Jacob stands for. Now there's other things we have the opportunity to connect to, but in particular right now, this is what we're doing. We are connecting to Jacob. This is Jacob going out on his journey. Yes, Stacy. What's the spiritual significance of Beersheba? I was going to tell you, I was going to actually say that because I was going to tell, yeah, Eric could confirm this, but it's the town of seven beers. Of, of seven, seven beers. Of seven beers would be one. But <laughs> it literally like the means, of Chicago. <laughs> it means, it means Beersheba, Yair, would you say seventh well or seven wells? Of beer. No, it will be beer the other way. it will be the the well of the seven. Okay. So the well of the seven, yes, Stacy, of course it's significant. It's this what is the well of the seven? 
This is the sixth spherot of Zeran Pin, the upper realm, and the seventh of Malchut, our realm, the vessel that receives light from the upper realm. So the whole reason why we have a Bible that talks about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, why they're even in the story, is because the world changed. What they did changed the world in such significant ways that it's important for us to be able to connect to their energy that's available for us. So we can work on changing the world. That starts with changing ourselves, but change yourself, change the world. You're really not responsible for changing anybody else. I am responsible for changing myself. Yes, Peter. I was just going to say, because it was the sections I was reading later sections, and they were talking about the well, and, and they were talking about Jacob, and it also related to his wife, but they had covered, they were covering the well, the whole section on being open and closed, and it, it was all about this stone that actually covers the well. So I think when you say the seven really is about Zeran, Pien, and Malchut, and there's a true, you know, we always talk about a funnel, whatever word, whatever visual we want, there is a hole, and we open it and close it, and actually was talking about the righteous can move the stone and the non-righteous, you know, cover it. Yeah, you know. so so all of that, all that, and this, there's there's so many powerful um, stories that play out in this portion and the, in, in these portions. There's so many, so many really powerful um, stories that are actually like moving. When you think about you think about Jacob meeting Rachel at a well. That whole story when you read it, but for us. It's like, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a nice story, but it's what we need to be present to when we're hearing that story is what it's doing for us in connecting to our soul and how it's assisting us in more fully manifesting our soul. It's like, and that's like a multi, a multi-dimensional opening. Like when you say, when I say manifest my soul, what does that mean? What does it mean manifest my soul? I mean, I have no idea. If I did, it would already be manifest. This is us connecting to all the aspects of what our capabilities, our capacities are that are hidden from us. Jacob just didn't leave Beersheba. He was on, a, he was ramping up his spiritual journey. It was time for him to ramp it up. And he does, big time. But up until this point, what did he really do? He made a stew and he bought the birthright, you know. What did he really do? He took the birthright when he went in and cooked dinner for his dad, you know, posing as, as Esau, which is a whole other story we're not going into right now. But, but the, you know, what do we need to do? We need to show up differently. How? How differently? I don't know. It's so individualized, but we need to show up differently. We want a different life. We need to show up in a different way. And that can be, those can be very painful exercises, very painful initiatives. We may not like conflict, but we have to lean into conflict sometimes. Because it's painful to grow. We have to break those shells that stand in the way. It's not easy for that little baby chicken to poke its way out of the shell. <laughs> it's a whole different, you know, even just birth, like we're literally surrounded by water for nine months. And that birthing process, I don't remember it. It probably was a little, a little uncomfortable for the newborn. Not the least to say the mother, in both cases, different experiences, but. Okay, keep going. <laughs> uh, well, the right and left columns correspond to the positive and negative poles of an incandescent light bulb. The central column correlates to the filament, which creates light through resistance. Okay, so this is like when we went, you know, this is one mm -hmm. of our most common examples of how the world works. Energy flows in and flows out. But the only way it radiates light is with resistance. Now, 
consider that your reality is not stagnant. What do I mean by that? You're sitting in a room, all you have are your cameras on. I see there's lighting there. It looks like the light is just, you know, there. It's not, it's energy that's flowing. It's coming in and it's going out. It's an energy flow. And the only way that light manifests in the rooms that you're in is with restriction, reflecting or restricting off of something. It's the nature of reality. There is no light in our reality. There's no light that originates in our reality. It's all coming from someplace else. I did a little stint in manufacturing in a prior life. A couple, no, not really prior. <laughs> prior life is like a 1% comment. I, I don't mean it that way. I mean it that way. I don't mean it. I did a little stint in manufacturing and I learned the distinction between what it means to be prime in manufacturing and what it means to be just somebody who essentially reassembles. Most manufacturing that takes place, they're getting their pieces from someplace else. They're just assembling them. They're not making anything. They're just doing assembly work. Well, that's really true of everything in the world. Nobody's prime in anything. What if I bought the steel for the car from the steel maker? Well, where'd they get it from? Well, I guess they mined it. Or they didn't actually mine it. They bought it from some brokers. Somehow it was mined. Were they prime? No. They just pulled the steel out of the minerals. They're available. Nobody does that. Nobody's prime in anything. It's the nature of your world and mine. It's the nature of the world. Our reality. There's nothing original here. There's only one entity that's prime in everything and that's the creator everything we experience is coming from there it's mind-boggling to think of it yeah it feels uh, spiritual light operates under the same principle we draw light from the upper world of zeran pin into our physical world of mahut when we apply the concept of restriction in our own life Okay, so this is, again, this is us. The role we play is to manifest that light. It doesn't necessarily <clears throat> show, but it's the light of fulfillment. Because we have basic light, right? We're not walking around exactly in the dark. We have basic light. But if we want fulfillment, that's where it's coming from. We have the ability to channel that fulfillment from the upper realm. Go ahead. This is achieved by resisting our impulsive, self centered desires. To fill in also assists us towards that end. So just so we're clear, fill in is something that, you know, typically those who need remedial work, namely the male species, put on in the morning. And I say remedial work because we're literally, it's an extra restriction that men need. I don't want to get into the whole gender issues here. Apparently, Rashi's daughters put on fillin' also. I don't want to get into that. The bottom line, the restriction falls on us because we have more work to do. We're the ones creating the wars and the conflicts and the exploitation of natural resources. I'm just saying, the exploitation of people. It's us. We're the ones. So we need more remedial work. Now, as we read this, we are connecting to the spiritual power that fillin give us, which is restriction. Because literally you put that on your left arm, which is restricting your desire to receive. Left column, gavura, desire to receive. When we put those fill in our left arm, we are, we are literally booting up for restriction for our day, restricting our desire to receive. Yes, Peter, I see your hand up. Yeah, so you, you have helped us. So we don't have to talk about it in gender. We talk about it in terms of energy, and that's what you've been saying. So... The male, the you know, you got the manifestation side and the creation side, the potential. So what if we're, when we're using the tefillin, but I mean, I guess this is where I'm confused, right? Because we're the potential. The male energy is the potential. So when we're putting our tefillin, we're, we're wrapping judgment. We're, so we're wrapping... We're, we're, we're wrapping the desire to receive for the self alone. So that's what we're doing. So that's the... It's a restriction on our desire to receive. That is correct. Okay. And the, because tefillin are really two parts. One goes on the arm, the other goes on the head. And the head tefillin is also 
assisting us in keeping our consciousness in a positive place, as opposed to a desire to receive for the self, a, a negative, selfish nature. And these are the two poles, positive sharing, right column, negative receiving for the self, left column. This is why it's so significant that Jacob is living, leaving Beersheba. What do I mean by that? Isaac never leaves. Isaac never leaves the Holy Land. Why doesn't he leave? Because he needed to be attached to that spiritual energy. Otherwise, judgment would have run amok and the world would not have survived. Isaac never leaves. Jacob is the channel of balance of Tiferet. He can leave. By contrast with Isaac. So when we connect to Tefillin, we connect to this section, what does that mean? Internally, it's us connecting to this energy of taking our desire to receive for the self and transforming it into a desire to receive for the sake of sharing. You're not getting rid of your desire to receive. The body that you have, this rental car that you have, that's not my metaphor, it's Mordechai's apparently, this rental car that, have that comes in the form of a body that we use while we're here comes with a desire to receive the self. If you're here and, and, you're, in, in a, and you're in a body, you have this desire to receive the self. Our goal is to overcome that nature. And the other piece of, con of, of connecting to this internal energy of tefillin through this section is helping us keep our consciousness in a place of sharing, in a place of positivity, and the cup is half full in understanding potential, in understanding with, with those of us who listened to Michal speak yesterday on our Thursday session, in our ability to see unlimited opportunities. I mean, how often do we show them and say, I can't do that. I, I can't do that. It happens all the time. That's coming from the other side. That's not you. That is not your soul. Okay, Phil, let's get going. To fill in also assists us towards that end. To fill in is bound upon the left arm, which denotes the negative power of the left column. Binding and restricting the power of the left arm weakens our own left column, the source of our selfish wanton desires. The forces released through our visual connection to the Hebrew letters help strengthen our connection to the light so that we may resolve the inner conflicts that cause our, our sense of separation from the eternal. Inner, conf it, inner conflict? What's the inner conflict? It's happening all the time. It's painful to think that I can't do it or I shouldn't do it or what am I doing? <laughs> It's it, literally it's painful. Oh my God, what a miserable morning I've had. I haven't gotten anything for, on my task list done. <laughs> you were supposed to do it. If you were supposed to do it, it would have gotten done. You weren't supposed to do it. But, but the other side is going to take that opportunity and just like, you know, hit us on the head with it. It's like, how do I maintain my equanimity? And by that, I mean my being okay with what is. It's so difficult because we have this body consciousness. We have the desire to receive the self. We have this self-judgment. We have this lack of self-care. We have this lack of self-compassion. We have this lack of connection with our soul. So we're getting the power to see beyond all that with these sections, with the energy that is that it, that these letters are infused with. Okay, keep going. By invoking the power of Jacob and to fill in through our attention to these passages, we receive the emotional strength, willpower, and foresight to rise above the power of impulse, creating union between ourselves and the light of the Creator. Yes, that that is our soul. We are connecting to our soul, which is a direct connection to the Creator, and this is why. At a, at a very fundamental level, in order for us to manifest more light, we need to be like the light. 
And to be like the light means to be a being of sharing because the creator is sharing with everyone that you encounter by just giving them license to be here and work on their, what they're here to do. I don't want to judge them. I don't want their challenges. I got my own challenges. <laughs> that are trying to figure out what they are. Because my body consciousness won't let me see it. My ego will not let me see it. If I saw it, I could correct for it. So I have to do that work. And how does the universe assist me in doing that work? It sends me challenges. Okay. Uh, you want to read the English to verse one? Okay. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Rabbi Hia opened the discussion with the verse, the sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to its place where it rises again. Okay, so that's from Ecclesiastes, uh, the book that Solomon wrote, one of the wisest men to ever walk the face of the earth. And by that, that can mean a lot of things. But the bottom line is, the sun rises, the sun sets. Set. This is life in under the sun. That's us. We're under the sun. We, this is not just like, you know, an ad for sunscreen. We are under the spiritual, the, the spiritual light of fulfillment. We experience it in waves. We experience fulfillment, and then we experience lack. In this world, you can experience both. But it's an illusion. The sun is always there. The light of fulfillment is always there. That lack is an illusion. But that's what it, that's what it's like when you're when you're walking around in this uh, this body spacesuit we have. That's the way we we perceive it. We don't have full perceptive abilities. We can develop greater perceptive abilities. We're doing it right now because your soul sees the deeper reality. Okay, keep going. This verse has been explained. The phrase, the sun also rises, refers to Jacob, who is there on pin. By the way, he... a famous Hemingway novel, right? Just thought I'd invoke that. The sun also rises, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Got it. Now okay. we know where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, refers to Jacob, who was there on pin when he was in Beersheba, which is Bina. Beersheba is Bina. It's the, full, it's the reservoir of fulfillment. It's the eighth sphira above Zeran Pin. It's where all the light is stored that finds its way through Zeran Pin into our realm. So what does it mean he left? He left that protective shell that he had there. Yes, Stacey. Bina is left column or right column? It's left. So that's also like ties to the tefillin. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Good, yeah, fellas. The phrase, and the sun goes down, refers to Jacob when he went to Haran. Ah, the so this is, oh, this is the reference. When you're in Beersheba, the sun is shining. Of course you are. You're there with, you know, Isaac and, uh, and Rebecca. You know, all's good in the tents. Life's great. I mean, your brother's, you know, whatever he's into. But, you know, for the most part, you're in this protective shell. Now you're going out. We have to go out. Why do we have to go out the protective shell? Because that's where the work's done. That's here. This is the journey of your soul. So Haran represents the polar opposite. It's when the sun is down. And this is the thing that Mikhail said yesterday, which was the mind blower. The sun's down. This ties neatly into Jacob leaves on this journey. He goes to take a nap in some random place. It's dark. Of course it's dark. He's sleeping that time. No, no, no. Of course, that's not the point. That's not why the Bible tells us it's dark. He's alone. He's experiencing lack. He has nothing. He's got the shirt on his back. And whatever else he could carry in that knapsack he had. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a visual of that. 
But he goes to take a nap. And then he has this dream about the ladder. And it's a great dream, right? Angels are going up and coming down. And the Zohar points out, why are the angels going up and coming down? Shouldn't they be coming down and going up? So this is this whole idea. He sees that the angels going up are the angels that were with him up to that point. But now he needs he needs reinforcements. Angel, so the angels, his, his current angels go up and new angels come down. He's going to a different place. He needs different support. I mean, do we get that? Yeah. 24-7. Did I see a hand up? Yes, Peter. I looked up. I thought I'd share. It's suggesting that the original city of Haran might be in what today is present-day Turkey. And I always think it's interesting to connect back to the physical because the various cities, you know, the turmoil that we see in the world and the places of conflict. Doesn't to, change. It doesn't, doesn't change. change. It That's doesn't change. Yeah. It does not change. And so, you know, even before we read the story of Jacob meeting Rachel and and then dealing with Levon and the whole thing, that whole narrative, it's like he has to really grow and connect to his resources, his potential. But really what he's doing is he's opening channels for us. And that's why we have this story. This is the way the universe assists us in connecting to the energy that was manifest by Jacob through this story. This story, these words, these letters are infused with that energy to give us the ability. So when we're in the dark, and this is what Michael said yesterday, to see the beauty in the dark. He saw the ladder. He saw the beauty. It's hard in the dark to see the beauty of that opportunity. But that darkness is there to assist us in going next level. That's the ladder. That leaving Beersheba and going to Haran, he's now, is he's, he's, he's him, is Jacob going to a, 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 an environment to assist him in growing so that we will have the benefit of all that work that he's doing. We mean human, humankind, the world. Okay, keep going, Phyllis. Or did we finish oh, that? What? what? We did that? We done? We've no, done? I not, didn't finish it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Around the new club, Zeron Pin, as it is written, and tarried there all night, for the sun was set. Well, tarried sounds like, does it mean that he was just like chilling out, you know, you know, streaming Netflix, or having a rough time? <laughs> he was having a rough time. It's negativity. It's darkness. It's lack. Yeah. The passage and hastens to its place where it rises again is similar to the verse and lay down in that place to sleep. This refers to the nukva called place where the sun hastens to shine. This is again us connecting to this, play, this space of energy of protection, energy of fulfillment that Jacob connects to and we also connect to. All right, verse two. Peter, did you want to say something? <laughs> did you have something to say? No, okay, good. All right, verse two. V'tachaze shimsha af al-gab dinaher l'chol alma mat lanoi bitrain sitrin inun k'mat adomer holech el darom v'sovev al tzafon begin d'da yamina v'da smala v'nageid unafei kol yoma misitra de mizrach v'yazel l'sitra de darom Come and behold, although the sun illuminates the whole world, it travels in only two directions, as it is written goes towards the south and veers to the north. What's south? Right Chesed. column. Chesed. Chesed, mercy. Right column, Abraham. And the north? I don't have my notes in front of me. It's Gvura. 
Is the left, judgment. left column. Yeah, left column. Desire to receive the self. That's it. We, I, we don't need to know which way the sun is going. <laughs> We, why do we need to know that? We need to know the energe energetically what's available to us, what we're dealing with. We need to be able to see the internal energy behind everything that's going on. And it's difficult because I'm to the degree that I rely on my five senses to tell me what's going on, I'm in the dark. <laughs> I'm literally in the dark. You're better off closing your eyes. You ever know sometimes when you do close your eyes, like you can have a Better sense of things. Yep. Well, the less the less visual stimulation sometimes. Okay, Phyllis. And the sun rises every day from the east side from its own aspect to ferret and travels towards the south side to the right column, Chesed. It then veers to the north side to the left column, Gvura. That is, it eventually combines the illumination from both columns. So it's like, it basically is going in four different directions. I mean, we know it rises the east and sets in the west, but along the way, it's heading south and then heading north. <laughs> Go ahead. And from the north, it veers to the west, the Nukva, and the sun moves to the west where it sets. He explained that the sun rises in the east as it is written and Jacob went out from Beersheba when the two columns south and north were combined in him. Ah, so there he is. What does it mean to combined in him? He's balancing mercy and judgment, sharing and receiving. He's, he is creating that balance. This is the, the truth of Jacob, the significance of Jacob. This is the deep, it's, it, there's a, Jacob's name is also, uh, is many times associated with the idea of truth, of emet. What's emet? In Hebrew, the word is emet. Emet is aleph mem taf. It's the first letter of the alphabet, and it's the last letter of the alphabet with a mem in the middle. It represents all of reality, this balance of all of reality. But on a much deeper letter level, it represents the balance of the three columns. This is why our teachers always talk about, like, what's the three-column system? It's creating the balance here. When things are in balance, blessings flow. Go ahead. The sun goes west to the Nukva, as it is written, and went toward Haran. This teaches us that the illumination alluded to in the text and Jacob went out is a complete illumination comprising the two columns, right and left, which is the secret of Chochmah and Hasidim combined. Okay. Hey, David, wait, yes. if I may. So what, what, what I was processing, really thinking through that. If you think about it, the whole section is going from, it starts with sharing. It starts with the light. The light emanates out to us. And then we are the ones, right? He created us, created man, person, woman, woman. And we needed to be able to bring down judgment, to be able to manifest the energy. And now Jacob created the, the channel so that we could have balance. That's right. And to a certain degree, this is the journey of our soul prior to reincarnation. Why prior? When, when you're in the upper realm, you don't have these challenges. We, do, yeah, we wait, come down you... here. We come down here to this world of darkness where the light, there's no original light here. This is that realm. You mean prior to incarnation? Prior because to, well, I'm saying prior to reincarnation. Prior no, because assuming... incarnation, because re each reincarnation is, the, is our soul doing the work through our vessel. Well, it's our soul coming back down here. Right, incarnation. Yeah, I'm not saying it, I'm not assuming it's the first time we've been here. But yes, yes, absolutely. Um, okay. Julie Versus had a question. Julie oh, had her hand up. Oh, I'm Julie sorry, had her hand up. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, friends. I was just going to offer um, something that it's, I've been thinking about so much these past two weeks that I'd really love to share it with you. It's on a more practical level. But I just think about, I, I just think about balance a lot during the day. You know, eating my vegetables and my carbs, maybe more carbs and vegetables, but 
you know, injecting more balance, moving, and then, you know, laying low and getting up early or staying up late or, you know, just trying to balance out the activities throughout the day as well, or my mindset, you know, I might be in a real funk and then try to think about something positive and just, it's super hard, but I noticed my better days are when I'm trying to be more balanced. Absolutely. It's a great point. I'm glad you shared that because it is, it, this does nothing for us if we're not looking at it from a practical standpoint. It's like, where do I need to show up with more self-care? Like we don't, we've been programmed to think, thinking about yourself is selfish. Thinking only about yourself may be selfish, but you still have to take care of yourself. Right. Yeah. Yes, Stacey? So, so Julie, what that brings up when, when David was talking about Emmet, like, so you have Aleph and Taf, right? So the beginning of the alphabet and the last letter of the alphabet and then truth with the Mem is what brings you balance. But Mem is also one of the three mother letters. So Aleph is air, Mem is water, and Shin is fire. So to get to truth and to balance, you have to bring in mercy because Mem is water and that's mercy. Mayim. Mayim. Water. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah. So this is why, you know, the world may be, there was another Zohar that I read in this week's portion uh, earlier this week where it's this whole discussion about how the world was created with judgment, but wouldn't have survived if mercy wasn't manifest. I mean, you got to have some discernment in life down here, some kind of distinctions, some kind of judgments. <laughs> we are making judgments all the time, but we need to do it from a merciful perspective. It's always right over left. I tried to explain to somebody last week that, uh, you know, Hasidi, like in, in Western culture, I can't speak for any other, because like, I don't know. In Western culture, like this shirt, well, these buttons are probably on. This shirt, buttons left over right. Well, Hasidim, they, their shirts button right. They only will wear shirts that button right over left. I mean, the extreme Hasidim, you know. Isn't that weird? Why do they do that? It's right over left. They're Hasidim. It's Chesed. It's mercy. Now, not, I mean, I manifest that way all the time. I'm just saying it's a different topic. But like, the, this is this is who we are. We are mercy <laughs> over judgment. <laughs> we are so totally like mercy over judgment. Don't want him to hear us. And it's important to always remember that. I mean, we still need boundaries, but they need to be appropriate boundaries. And part of those boundaries, to Julie's point, is we need boundaries around self-care. We can't show up in, in the way that we need to show up. We can't really help the world. We can't really change if we're not taking care of ourselves. Um, verse three, Rabbi Shimon Amar. Rabbi Shimon said that Jacob went out of the ambit of the land of Yisrael, as it is written, and Jacob went out from Beersheba, which is the Nukva in its entirety called Beersheba and called the land of Yisrael. And he went to another domain, as it is written, and went toward Haran, outside the land of Israel, Israel, where the other side rules. Thus, Jacob came to the east, the secret of the central column that comprises the right and left columns, as it is written, and Jacob went out from Beersheba. This means that during a sabbatical year, namely the Nukva, Jacob took the shining light from the supernal depth, Bina and traveled west. That is, he took the light which sets in the west, the left column without the right, and went to Haran, a place of judgment and wrath, which is the domain of the other side. So this is pretty self-explanatory in terms of his journey, which we've talked a lot about. I just want to finish with this, this idea that 
he leaves Beersheba, he goes to Haran, and where does his life end up? In Egypt, where the other side dominates. But he's a completely different person. He's a completely different channel. And he really perfects so much in the darkness. The darkness is our opportunity to work on our perfection. And so we always need to remind ourselves that in that darkness is the opportunity for us to get to our next level. The sun will also rise, though. <laughs> it will rise. Just as we know, the sun will set today and will rise tomorrow, so too the challenges, the obstacles that we encounter are there to assist us in growing and expanding our vessel so that we can accommodate and be there for the sunrise. Okay, everybody. Have an awesome Shabbat. Thank you, you so all. much. Shabbat Thank you. Shabbat Thank shalom, you guys. Everybody. Thank you so much. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Thanks, Shabbat David. Shabbat shalom. Awesome class. Thank yep. you.